Hey team, Patrick here, and in today's lesson, we've got some offense. We're going on the attack with the short forehand put away from the midcourt. Now, this shot can be a real stumbling block for a lot of recreational players and really holds them back from getting to the next level. Because let's say you play a lot of pushes, you get a lot of chances to play the ball from this area here. It's also a lot of, a lot of opportunities to miss and make mistakes if you don't have the proper technique. And actually any technical flaws you do have in your stroke will be exaggerated when you're having to generate all of your pace here. And actually oftentimes players would rather receive a quicker ball. So let's get into it and fix this. Firstly, if we recognize we've got a short ball, we want to set up to play our forehand. Even if the ball is coming slightly to our backhand side, we're going to have the opportunity on this slower ball to move around it. We're going to want to get our forehand into play because it's going to give us the best opportunity to attack. We're also going to want to get our feet up inside the baseline early before the bounce to take the ball at the top of the bounce. We want to take it above the height of the net, above net level. We don't want to let the ball drop. Now, I say we want to get our feet up inside the baseline early, but we also don't want to run into the ball and give ourselves no time and no space. As of all our shots, we want to set up the shot first by coiling our upper body to the side. Now I can run forwards, but I want to run to the side of the ball so I can rotate my body into the contact. I'm going to do this by having big steps up to the ball initially. And the closer I get to the ball, I'm going to shorten my steps. I'm going to have these shuffles, these adjustment steps to really fine tune my contact in and around the ball. Now I'm going to want to contact this shot about level with my shoulder. And I'm going to want to use an open stance. As we talked about in the drive volley video, the open stance is going to give me the best chance to coil and uncoil my body into the shot and stop me sort of just slapping at the ball with my arm. <sighs> now, because I'm taking this ball a little bit higher, I'm also going to want to give myself a little bit more space. What most players fail to recognize is a contact point that feels comfortable, say, level with my waist here, if I just raise my arm up and I don't move my racket any closer or further away from me, what felt comfortable in this position here is now going to feel sort of horrible. It's going to feel really jammed up once I get a little bit higher with my contact. Uh, I'm going to get this wrong. It's been a while, but is it like uh, a protractor in school? If I draw a semicircle to the side of me here, a lower ball is going to need to be played a little bit closer to me and as my racket raises a little bit higher to my waist, it goes a little bit further away until it reaches this sort of maximum distance away from me. Level with my shoulder here before it actually starts to come sort of back in towards me on a something like a smash. Now, speaking of space, we've got a little bit less space to play this shot into when I'm a little bit further forwards in the court. So I'm going to want to aim my trajectory a little bit lower. If I play at the same height that I do at the back of the court, well, the ball is now going to carry too far, it's going to sail too long. So I want to aim closer to the net. Now I'm going to do this by swinging through the ball a little bit more and less up. So I talk about drawing a, a circle around and in front of your body this way, rather than sort of at the side of your body and up this way, as you would do at the back of the court. So the tip of your racket is going to go more forwards through the contact and less up in this position here, as it would if I was trying to hit with a lot of topspin. We want to turn all of the speed of our racket here into speed on the ball and not have any of that speed sort of lost or sort of scrubbed off into topspin. The ball is going to be pulled into the court through this trajectory, through gravity, and not through the spin. Now, how much I can sort of really play through the ball or down on the ball is going to be determined by a couple of factors. How close I am to the net and how high I make contact with the ball. A good way to look at it is if I'm back here in the court, well, I can see the baseline below the height of the net. So from here, 
I'm going to need to play the ball a little bit higher with a little bit more top spin and shape and margin for error to clear the net. As I move forwards, well now the baseline disappears. I can't see it through the net tape, so I can play a little bit more through this shot. And as I continue further forwards in the court, well now I can actually see the baseline above the height of the net, so I can really play more down on this ball here. <sighs> Now, I want you guys to go out and practice these shots from this area of the court. Not a lot of us, uh, not enough of us are practicing this shot. We're either hitting shots from the baseline or we're practicing our volleys up at the net. But this sort of transitional game, this mid-court game is going to be really important to be able to take your game to the next level and stop you making mistakes or missing out on these opportunities to capitalize and hit winners. You can do this with the way that I've been doing it today. So through like a, a self feed where you just put a ball up to yourself <coughs> here, because this is going to be a very sort of typical ball that we receive in this area of the court here. It's going to have these same sort of ball characteristics. Right. One more from me. <coughs> okay. Right. Signing off guys. If this video has been helpful, please give it a like. Please share it around. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos coming. And let me know in the comments, is this helpful? Does this help you to win your, uh, win your next match? Or let me know if there's any other topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you on court in the next one.